Hallelujah. I am grateful to be here this morning. Are you grateful to be in the presence of God? Yes. Amen. I am grateful also to see the beautiful, shining faces of my sister, and I thank God for that. Our reading is coming from the book of Psalms 121. Psalms 121. And I read. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, by, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Amen. He shall preserve thy soul. Amen. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from Amen. this time forth and even Amen. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Many times when you read these psalms, we think of protection, physical protection. But it's even beyond physical protection. Verse 1 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Why would you and I lift up your eyes unto the hills? Where are you at the moment when you, you're, as you're saying, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills? The only way place you could be at that moment yeah. is to in a valley. You must have been in a valley. I must be in a valley for me to say, Lord, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. And the reason why we find ourselves say that, or the, the, the psalmist wrote this, the psalmist himself must have found himself in a valley. And he realized this valley is not where I'm supposed to be at that time, at that moment of his life. In this life that we live, there are so many valleys. There are so many valleys in this life. Right now, as you speak, many of us are in valleys. And these valleys are different. They come in different forms, in different dimensions, in different depths, in different sizes. These valleys present themselves in, in forms of challenges of life. They present themselves in challenges of difficulty in life. It could be your own personal life. It could be uh, your family as a whole or individuals in your household. These valleys are dark and very difficult to stay in or to walk through. These valleys present anguish and anxiety. They're so painful, you don't know, difficult. These valleys, they pose threats and fear to us in life. That's why sometimes, you know, our sister is going through a situation. They sometimes cry. They sometimes they're worried. They're some, they are fearful. Because the values are difficult for us to go through. Sometimes we question, we question God. We ask God, where are you? Why is this happening to me? As Christians, we tend to forget when the valleys are, we are faced with valleys. We tend to forget where to look, to look up to. We turn our eyes from looking up to the hill and we look to different places. We look up to fellow human beings. We put our eyes right onto that valley. But today God is reminding us in his word I will lift up my eye unto the hills. What is unto the hills that we are looking for? Why to the hills? Why not turn on your left or on your right and look to your left or to your right? There is something beautiful on the hills. The hills present the presence of God. 
it presents our God. It is only God that we have that we can always look up to. And we know because we've experienced many times of women of God, mm-hmm. after we go through that value and we've been, you know, doubting and fearful and fidgeting, confused. Sometimes in God's mercy and love, he reminds you and I say, no, my daughter, I am here, look up to me. Look up to me. The hills present prayer. We read the word and then we say, no, well, I'm going to look, I'm going to call on you. I'm going to pray for this situation. A lot of us here can give a testimony of how many things that God has brought you through because you prayed. Not only pray, but you prayed through. The hills presents prayer, calling on God. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 33, verse 1. Two, three says, call on me and I will answer. So sometimes when we find ourselves in the valley after we've, you know, we've been shaken, a lot of us most of the time forget. I bet a few of us will remember, you know what, this situation, I need to quickly just call on God because there's no way out. So we remember to call on him. And we remember that he said, if we call on him, he will answer us. Then we call on him. Valleys are inescapable. We cannot escape them. Sometimes, they, as I say, they come in the form of challenges. We can't escape them. For example, sickness. They come. We don't welcome them. You don't call them. Who wants to be sick? Nobody wants to be sick. We cannot escape them. They come in every form. Some come in the form of cancer. Some come in the form of flus and colds. Some come in the form of headache, migraines. They come in different, like I said, dimension, different, you know, sizes. Other, 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 uh, other valleys that we cannot escape are issues like maybe problems in marriage, problems with our children. Who wants to have problems, you know, always fighting, dragging your children? Do right, give your life to Christ. Some are young, but most of them are of, of age. They are inescapable. The values of life, they expose us to a lot of things. They cause us to realize where we are in our work of faith. They expose our limitations. They expose our lack of understanding. They expose our lack of knowledge. We may have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. We know when we pray, we say, Lord, as I read this word, grant me understanding. Open my eyes of understanding. The values exposes our limitations. It exposes how much we know. It exposes our ability to remember, to remember the promises of God. How much do I am able to remember when I find myself in the valley? How much are you, my sister, and I are always able to remember? what the promises of God concerning your situation in life. The valley exposes our limitations. The valley exposes us. It exposes our weaknesses. You know, sometimes you walk in this place, you're just quite going about your life. A situation come, you're strong, you know, you're praising and worshiping God, you're prayerful. And then a situation comes. I'm reminded of, of Job. When Job was afflicted, when the enemy, you know, was out, you know, to rage him, to, you know, tear him down and apart. Job had a strong faith, but then sometimes he was wondering. To a point, he almost came to doubt. See, ah, sometimes we are like that. The valleys exposes our limitation. The valley exposes our weaknesses. The values always let us know the amount of strength we have in faith in God. You know, the, the book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 says, if you and I faint on the day of your adversity, it means your strength. The value will help you to determine how much strength you have. The value will always expose you weaknesses and cause you to know, you know what? I have to continue. I cannot, you know, this race is a continual race. It's not a race that today I feel I'm good. I don't have issues. You know, I see a, a neighbor there is sick or this is happening to them. You, you feel, and you feel that you, are, you cannot, you know, you can, your time will never come. These values 
help us to grow in our work of faith. They help us to develop a prayer life. You, know, you find people sometimes, things are going on well. You're married, you have a husband, you have children, you have a promising career, you have a beautiful home. You know, things are running when you lack nothing. But then a situation hits you. And a sudden sickness comes in, in your own body, in your own life, in one of your loved ones. And then start remembering. After you've been home, anxiety kicks in and fear kicks in and you are a little bit confused. You again remember that, you know what? The, the, the only problems that we remember last, we remember God last. We then remember that I need to call on God. This is the hill that the verse one is talking about. You find yourself in a valley and you decide to now look up to the hills. You call on God because you know God is your help. If you read this scripture all the way, verse, um, verse five says, the Lord is my, my keeper. The Lord is my, thy shade upon thy right hand. He is the one that keepeth you. He says he keep. He is the one that keeps his right. Will he slumber? He does not slumber. If he did it for the Israelites, and we are now the, representing the Israelites today, we even have even a better, a better promise, a better covenant with our God. Do you think God will sleep on you? Do you think God will forget you and I? No, he will not. So the valleys, as they expose our weaknesses, they also help us to grow. They help us to grow our prayer life. They help us to grow our faith. They help us. It's like a, they're like a refining fire. They refine you and I. It looks like this walk of faith. Sometimes when I think about it, it's like, can you imagine if this life was without problem? There are no affliction. There is no demon, you know, chasing you left, right, and center. You know, everything is fine. Do we think that we will be calling on God? Do we think that we'll be acknowledging God as God in heaven? God wants us to acknowledge him. God wants us to worship him. God wants us to praise him. God wants us to live for him and him alone. We are very, very important to God. I am important to God. You are important to God. Your husband is important to God. Your children are important to God. Every one of your relatives, every human being are important to God. Even the people we look at and we see are downtrodden. Every soul is important to God. Why do you think God is so mindful of souls? Why do you think God even wants souls to be saved? Because we are important to him. So, as the value exposes our weaknesses, as the value is helping us to grow spiritually, we now develop our prayer life. Now we seek the God's face. We look up to the heel because he is our helper. He is our helper. In the valley, God is God. In the mountain, he is still God. We know this song that this lady Linda Randolph sang. The God of the mountains, he is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he make it right. And the God of the good times, he is still God in the valley. God of the day, he is still God in the night. Do you believe in that God? Do you trust this God? Do you look at your situation, the value you find yourself in, and tell God, I know you are still God in this world? I know you are still God in the mountain. It's not only when we're, when we're in the mountain and things are going on smooth that we acknowledge God. But God says that in everything, in everything, in good and bad, 
in pain and in, in joy, in sorrow and in, in sickness, in comfort. I am still God. Call on me. I am still your father. I am still your healer. I am still your redeemer. I am still your restorer. I am still your deliverer. I am here for you. I don't know what you and I are going through. It could be sickness. It could be your marriage. It could be your child or your children. It could be your job. It could be your business. I don't, the devil is always looking for you and I, especially as a child of God. There's a war. There's a war that is going on. There's a war that is going on and we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We cannot relent. We cannot give up. Our strength must be renewed. Our faith must increase. Our trust must be anchored on God. It could be sin. You and I find yourself dwelling in a particular sin and you're bound on that sin. And you'll be crying to God all the time, Lord, deliver me from the break the yoke of this sin. Break this yoke. You really want to live right for God, but you find yourself not. The God wants to restore your soul and I mm -hmm. on the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, Psalms 23 verse 3 says so. He restores my soul, my soul on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He's doing it for himself. He's doing it for himself, but we are also beneficiary of him. I want to encourage somebody today that God loves you so much and God loved me so much. He says in the book of Psalms 8, verse, verse 5, I think, really, that he has crowned you with glory and honor. We are little lower than the angels. The angels are up there, they're, you know, they're with God, they're being sent back and forth. They see the glory of God every day, every moment. We are still here struggling in this life, fighting for our soul salvation. God has not forgotten you. No matter the attack, the valley comes in the form of sudden attacks. Serious sudden attacks. How was your day yesterday? How how's your days? How are your days this week? Were your days smooth? Did everything go well? Did you not have anything to look, you know, to, to, to complain about? Did you have anything that was pressing issues in your life? Did you even face any sudden attacks in your life? Even if you didn't know you as a person, in your and your neighbors around you, did they did you see them face something? I did this week and they were serious. In fact, one happened yesterday that I, I blew, blew my mind. And I could see the hand of the enemy working, seriously working, but God, but God. We called on God throughout this week. And because we called on God, because we looked unto the hill, those issues, those attacks that the enemy posed at us, they did not prosper. Praise the Lord. They did not prosper. We anchor our faith on God. We anchor our trust on God. They will not prosper. I want us to read the book of Psalms 23. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's the only scripture I want us to read. And I also read verse 3 and 4. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When I'm faced with challenges, difficulties, trials and tribulations, in this life, whom do I look up to? Mm. Whom do you look up to? Do you give worries and anxiety? Mm. Well, God has told you, you yourself and I, as a psalmist say, he is my shepherd. You know the shepherd, right? The shepherd is the one that takes care of you. He is your shepherd, he is my shepherd. Don't be afraid, don't be worried, don't look at any other place. You know, in the village back home, there are people who they like to do rituals. They go to the to the witch doctors. When the situation becomes so hard, they're even witches and wizards. They bewitch people. When they see other people progress, they don't want their progress because they themselves they are not there, so they're jealous or they're envious. They do dubious things. We have made up our mind that we are proclaiming today again 
if anyone wants have, have forgotten, the Lord is our shepherd. Amen. He's a gentle shepherd. He's a caring Amen. shepherd. He's a strong shepherd. He knows Amen. the way. The Bible says he's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Where else should we look up to? Why should we look at other things? Why should I put my eye on the situation? I want to give an example. Many of, many of us, for those who go to our church, our church member sisters, say, you know my daughter, Natalie. By God's grace, God has blessed us, girl, with brains. The Lord has given her grace. She loves school so much, and she's very brilliant. But like this girl, the devil is working on her so much. As I speak today, she don't want to come to church. She just stopped. At first, I used to worry. I used to think, oh, why? Why? One sister gave me a prayer point and told me, Sister Jackie, use this prayer point. The prayer point is the book of Timothy, the one that talks about uh, Lois, the grandmother of Timothy. He told me, Jackie, be praying, tell uh, God that, Lord, give Natalie the kind of faith that you have. Just like Timothy looked at his grandfather, um, Mother Lois, and that faith that the grandmother had, had an impact on her. So I've been praying, I pray that prayer point. And you know, sometimes we tend to forget, even us that have been the work of faith for some time. We think that God is a fast food restaurant, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, fast food restaurants, you go to the line, you go with your car, and you, you're rushing to work, you have maybe five, 10 minutes, and you know, you cannot go to a, a, a restaurant, you yourself cannot, to where you sit down and wait for food to be start cooked up fresh. We run to the fast restaurant. Many times we take God as a fast food restaurant place. In other words, we are not patient to wait on God. We think that when we ask right, right now, there's some things that God has to work us, to walk us through. It does not mean that my daughter Natalie soul will not be saved. I trust God and I believe with every iota in my life. I tell mm -hmm. God I cannot serve you. I cannot serve you in vain. If it's a fast evangelism, I do. I tell God it has to be in my heart. And it begins with me standing in the gap, just like my sister was praying and saying, we are the gatekeeper. I took my, take myself as a gatekeeper in my home. And I always thank God. I say, God, I don't know why you chose me first to be the one to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. I'm, I have a family of five. I have three beautiful children. The four of them, my kids come to church, my son. But I don't think he's there yet. So I tell God, this valley, this is a valley for me. I know there's a sister here or some sister that will attest to it that they're like me. They have children, they're struggling with. They are of age, and you've been, you, they were born in church, raised in church, but there's a struggle. I want to encourage you. Let us join us. To trust God. Ask God to give you grace to continue praying. God is not a fast food restaurant. He's not a quick fix. He doesn't quick fix. There are things that God will, miracles will happen, you know. Quickly because he, he, he decides to. But when you look at soul salvation, soul is not an easy. It's not, it's not a small thing. There are two forces fighting. It does not mean our God is not strong enough to do it. He can do it. I just want to encourage you today, anyone on this line today that has a child that is struggling, a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, you're fighting it. Don't worry. Replace that worry and that anxiety and fear with prayers. Replace that challenge. Is it your marriage? Are you challenged in marriage? Replace the worries and pray. The Bible says after you've done all that you know how to do, stand. Stand. Psalms 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. In the valley, the challenge, the form of sickness in the valley, the challenge, the difficulty, the trial and tribulation. God is calling you and telling you, sisters, my daughters, be still and know that I am God. Sudden attacks that come in our lives. It means the enemy is very close, always looking. He's roaring everywhere, looking around, aimlessly looking for whom to devour, looking for whom to attack. How are you positioning yourself when attack comes? 
How are you complaining? Are you looking for people to blame? Are you looking for situation to you know to solve their problem? Are you remembering Psalms 121 verse 1? It is a question. Go and ask yourself, now that I'm faced with this, where should I, whom should I call? I'm in the valley. We are told the God of the valley is still the God of the mountains. The God of good times is still the God of the bad times. I don't know what valley and you and I are in right now as a people, individuals. These valleys, they present, they bring forth depression. They bring discouragement, they bring fear, they bring anxiety. Are you depressed in this season of your life? Are you discouraged because of the circumstances of your life? You don't have a job, you're down financially, you are see, afflicted with terminal illness. The doctors keep telling you, come for this, come for this. You do chemo, rounds of radiation. You don't see nothing is happening. I want to remind you again, God is not a fast food restaurant. Be patient with God, but continue pushing on. Continue calling on him. Continue trust him. The Bible says, all flesh are mine. Is there anything that is too difficult for God? Do we really believe the word of God? I like the way Sister Midi puts it. I work with Sister Midi. <laughs> Sometimes I look at her and I just say, God, I wish I could have an iota of her, just a little bit of her faith. She has a faith like a little child. Sometimes she does things and I look at her and I say, ah, I don't even say to her, I say, myself, is this woman okay? The way she takes things easy, the way she trusts and calls on God. I say, now, wow. Let me speak like Nigeria. You know, I've been in your midst for a very long time and I appreciate you. I'm always saying I'm a half 50 in Nigeria, half 50 Kenyan. I say, now, wow, hey, it blows my mind. Mm. And God is literally who he says he is. Have faith, trust in God. Pour out your heart unto him. Is there any trouble anywhere? Is there any trouble anywhere in your life? Yes, we all have trouble. Sometimes we don't speak about that. But, but there is God in heaven. There is our Father. He's called Emmanuel, God with us. I want you to believe from this moment that God is with you. You only realize that God is with you when you come to the prayer line or on Friday, revival time when we say, come give testimony. I want to remember one day she said, Christy was the mama Christy was giving a testimony how she escaped an accident. I was listening to her. Oh, my goodness, I came to realize God is always with us. Yeah. He's always with us. Yesterday we had so many incidents at our workplaces. And I just came to realize that truly this Emmanuel, God with us, He is here. He is here. He is here. He is with you. He's always with you. Whether you sense him or you don't, he is there with you. So I just want us at this moment, it could be your marriage, it could be your child, it could be your health, it could be your work, you have trouble, it could be school, all manner of sorts of things that we could find ourselves in. Because in every season, the Bible talks about times and seasons. We're in a season and our seasons are different. Could be a season in your marriage, could be a season with your children, season in your work of faith, which is even more important. What season do you find yourself in? What is the time? What time are you, what time zone, what timeline do you and I find ourselves in? I know the time zone I am in. Do you know your time zone? Do you know your season? Today, God is telling you in that season, in that timeline, call on me and I will answer you. Look up to the hills, I will help you. I don't sleep, I don't slumber. I kept the Israelites, I will keep you too. And I will protect you from now, from now and even forevermore. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyone that came on this line this morning discouraged? 
Anyone came on this land with faith going down, dwindling. Anyone that came this down, doubting God. I want us to lift up our voices at this moment. Our first prayer, we are going to lift up our voices and give God thanks. I want you I to thank God. Remember the scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Give God thanks to God in all things, in all situations, in all battles, in all trials and tribulations, in all difficulties, in all of your lacking. Give God thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do you believe that this is the will of God for you and I, where you are? If someone tells me, oh, I am sick, I have terminal sickness, and you say, this is the will of God for me in Christ Jesus, is that easy to accept? You know, sometimes we say, oh, we know it's an enemy attack. The enemy has thrown an arrow at me. Is that the will of God for you and I in Christ Jesus? Can we say that if I have terminal illness, the will of God in Christ Jesus? No. No. No, we cannot. But God wants us to give him thanks because, you know, he came for us. He came to help us. He's the greatest. The Bible says he did not come to, uh, he came for those who are sick. He's the greatest physician. Physical sickness and spiritual sickness. He came for situations like that. That's why it was manifested that he may destroy the works of the enemy. Let us begin to open our mouth and tell God. Thank you very much because God, I know you are here. You are, here to help me. You are present in my life. You are present in my situation. Let us open our mouths and thank God. Thank God for the issues you go through. Thank God for the trials and tribulation. Thank God for the valley. Thank God for the valley. Thank God for that. The mountain is present. The mountains is available unto us. We all just lift up our eyes and look up to Him. And look up to the mountain. Look up to God. Look up for the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of God, demons cannot penetrate. In the presence of God, every valley disappears. In the presence of God, the challenges go away. In the presence of God, the discouragement diminishes in the presence of God. Anxiety and fear cannot stand. Thank God for every valley you find yourself in. Thank God for every difficulty. Thank God for every challenge. Thank God for that situation that you and I find themselves in that is so difficult for you, that is exposing every limitation, that is exposing your weakness, that is exposing your lack of understanding and lack of knowledge, that is exposing you and causing you to know and understand that you're limited, that you cannot do everything for yourself that you have to rely on God, that you have to abide in. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the difficulties I've in my life. Thank you for the challenges I have with my children. Thank you, Lord God Almighty Father, for every lack that I have because today I have come to realize again that God, I can look up to the healing the Lord that keepeth thee, the Lord that has no slumber, does not sleep, the one that is able to lift me up from the mighty clay, the one that is able to lift me up from the valley and to mount me up from the mountain. Thank give God thanks, give God thanks at this moment. I appreciate your God. I want you to pray with understanding. I want you to imagination. Say the Bible, God that can do exceedingly, exceeding. I want you to imagine the exceeding, exceedingly abundantly above all that you and I can imagine or think. Can you think of a situation where God removes every trace of things in somebody's body? Can you think and imagine where that, that child, that boy, that girl that is a prodigal or child in your home in your life Amen. god is touching his or her heart and turning him away can you imagine oh. can you think or imagine just imagine imagination just to imagine oh. form it in a form that you the way you want it imagination imagine it in a positive way can you imagine that situation that sickness that sudden attack that god just you know escape you from can you imagine your job your business that the enemy is trying to attack can you imagine the way the enemy wants you to go in a dungeon of sin and want to tie your soul and cause you to 
to remain in that situation. I want you to imagine the God that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever think for, think of, or imagine. The God that can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you and I can think of. The God that can save the soul that is too difficult. Is it not soul that was saved, that was so difficult? Is it no soul that God touched his soul and slapped him with, with spiritual reality? Is it no soul that God slapped with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding like a twinkle of an eye? Is it your child or your son or your brother or your sister that God is going to be too difficult for? Is it not God that created them? Is it not God that is giving them the breath of life every to sustain them? So what is a man's soul to God? I want you to lift up your voices. I want us to lift up our members, lift up our children, lift up our husbands, lift up our brothers, and any one of them that is not born again. I want you to tell God, I, I am looking up to the hills where my help is coming from. Lord God Almighty, you are my heal. You are my heal. You are my help, my God. Today I present my family before you. My, my help, God, come to my rescue. Lord, rescue the souls in my home from going to hell. Rescue the souls in my home towards the direction of hell in the name of Jesus. God, I present my husband before you. I present my daughter, my daughter Nale, my son David, my daughter George, into the hand of the heel of the Lord. Father, I come here. I am. My feet to God. I call on you this morning and I ask, Lord dear Lord Jesus, God save them. Save my family, save my children, save my husband, my God. My face is looking up to the hills. Right? That's your heel come from my sister. Your help is coming from the Lord. Look up to the heavens. Look up to the hills. Call on this God. He is the hills we are talking about. He is the hill that the scripture is talking about. Oh God, I look up to you this morning. My God, I look up to you this day. Lord, I look up to you, my father, in my home, God Father. Lord, touch souls, touch hearts, touch lives, my God Jesus. Lord, I commit my husband into your hand. I commit my daughter Natalie. I commit my son David, my, jo my daughter George. Oh, you are my heal. In the presence of God, there is deliverance. In the presence of God, there is salvation. Oh, my God. When that presence comes down and that presence touch life, he forms and everybody gets the spiritual common sense. Lord, instill in everyone the spiritual common sense. Instill in everyone knowledge and understanding. God, open the eyes. Open their eyes. Open the ears to hear the call of Jesus Christ. Open their ears to hear the call. The Holy Spirit is knocking, but the ears are deaf. The Holy Spirit is knocking, but the heart is hardened like a rock. Lord, the Bible said, God said, I will sprinkle water on you, clean water that will wash away every filthiness, every iniquity. Tell God that that water that you promised, Lord, I am asking for that water nightly now. As I look up to the hill, I am asking for that water for soul salvation of my loved ones. I am asking for that water to go in and cleanse and purify and take every field of iniquity in their hearts. I am asking, you also promised a spirit, a new spirit will I also give unto you. Tell God, Lord, this new spirit that cometh from you, I ask for it. Give it unto my husband. Give it unto my son, David. Give it unto my daughter, Natalie, in the name of Jesus. Give it unto my daughter, John, in the name of Jesus. Give it, oh my God, you are a God that say the thing and do it. Won't I do it? The Bible says that God is not a man like his word will go on to accomplish that which he has said. It is up to you and I. Are you believing God? Are you trusting him this day that he can save your loved ones? Are you trusting God that he is your help that you are looking up to? Oh, lift up your gates. You are like the king of glory come in. Lift up, the gates of your heart. Lift up the gates of your life that the king of glory may come in and do great and mighty things in your life, in your family, in your homes, in your children's life, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are going to take our next prayer point and our prayer point, I want us to ask God to give us faith and shake people faith. And you cannot call on to the hill. You cannot look up onto the hill without faith. You cannot. The Bible says that, you know, it's only faith that moves the hand of God. Do you believe in this God that you're calling on? Do you believe on this? Are you looking up to that hill just for the sake of looking at it? Are you looking for it for granted? Tell God, increase my faith. Increase my faith and trust in you. Increase my faith and let me trust in you again. If your faith has dwindled and has gone down, tell God, Father, I need you 
to increase my faith. Faith over forefathers. Faith only faith. Thank God, I need this faith. Where my faith has gone down, where situations have bogged you down and your faith has gone down. Tell God, increase my faith. Strengthen my faith. Tell God, strengthen. You still have faith, but your faith is going a little loose. Your faith is going a little shaken. Tell God, I want my faith to be strong. I want my faith to be strong. Faith is means believing in God. Do you and I believe in God? Do you believe in God that He is who He says He is? Do you believe in God that He is? He is the one that can do what He says He can do. He tells us everything in His word. Do you believe that God is a healer? He said, I have sent my word that you may be healed. He said, I am the deliverer of your soul. Do you believe that God can deliver you from your troubles? Do you believe that God can heal you? Do you believe that God can come and take away and wash away every kingdom of darkness that is surrounding you and walking and chasing after you? Do you believe that God can restore your soul for the, to the path of righteousness? That sin that you and I find yourself dealing it back and forth, you keep going on it once in a while, you, are, you know, it's tasteful to you. Tell God that God will lead me to the path of righteousness today in the name for your namesake in the name of Jesus Christ. I have faith. I believe God that you can do it for me. I have faith. I believe that God you can deliver me. I have faith. I believe that God you can lead me to the right path of righteousness. For your name's sake, just doing Jesus remember his name when God remembers the name of Jesus, he does not want his name to be joined with. He does not want his name to be messed up with. He does not want his name to be run under the mud. He does not want his name to be reproached. I want you to ask God, Lord, restore my soul to the path of righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, restore our souls, my God, to the path of righteousness this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, restore us, God, restore our souls. Oh, mighty God, restore our souls this morning to the path of righteousness for your name's sake, my God. Restore our so there's any woman here, God, that is struggling in tears with anger, with anxiety, Lord, with fear. God, I ask, restore our soul to the path of righteousness. Every woman that is struggling with sin with any form, my God, I ask this morning, I present myself before you, I present my sister before you, and I ask for restoration of our soul to the path of righteousness. Well, we have drifted apart, our soul have drifted apart. Restore our souls, restore our souls, restore our souls my God. Restore our so this morning to the path of righteousness because of your namesake. So your namesake, so your name may not be reproached, my God. But your mercy, oh God, restore us, God. Restore us from the dangers of sin. Restore us from the bondage of sin. Restore us, my God and Father. Sin prevents us from entering into the kingdom, into the holy of God. Sin prevents us from receiving our blessings. Sin prevents us from God. When God looks at your face and look at me and say, This one, this one is full of this. This one is full of iniquity. This one is full of complaint. This one is full of every form of sin. My God, Lord, today we present ourselves to God. We break the power of sin. My God, that the power of God will come upon you to break every evil habit that you have. To break, break every every evil taste that you have in your taste bud, spiritual taste bud, my strength in the name of Jesus. Tell God, change my spiritual taste bud. Change my spiritual test bud. Change my spiritual test bud. Lord, change my spiritual test bud. Change my spiritual test bud today. I want my spiritual test bud to be changed. I want my spiritual test bud to be changed. Lord, when I speak, when I speak, I want to speak with wisdom. When I speak, I want to speak with wisdom. wisdom, God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, Father, restore my soul. Restore my soul to the path of righteousness for your name's sake today. In the name of Jesus Christ, according to Psalms. 23 verse 3. Restore my soul, my God, according to God, to the, to the path of righteousness for your namesake in the mighty name of Jesus. Restore my soul, my Father, my God. Give me faith. Ground me in faith. Ground me in faith. Help me to believe in you, no matter how difficult the situation is. Help me to believe you, my God, no matter how the fire the, 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 the Help me to believe you, my God and Savior, in the mighty name of that I may not bring your name to reproach. And I may not bring your name to report. Restore my soul to the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And I may not, Father, bring your name to report. That I may not toy around with your name. That I may not wash you on the floor with your blood, my God and Father. Many times, sisters, we hold this God like he's just any other God. We hold God like a toy in our hands. We treat God like it does not matter. God matters because you know what? God matters because when we find ourselves in difficulty, we end up calling on him. There is not any, there is every life, there's part of 
life always end up to dead end. But to God, there is a way. He's a way maker. He's a way maker. He's a healer. He's going to be a way maker in your life today. He's going to be a healer. Heal you spiritually and help you physically. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God gives you faith and God gives me faith. Yes. How are you going to apply that faith? There has to be grace. Without grace, you cannot. You know, even for you to pray, like you're praying now, you have to have grace. For you to be able to wake up, to have your devotion every morning, to read your Bible, you have to have grace. Grace is the oil. Without the grace, you cannot. I cannot. I want us to ask God, now that you have instilled back faith in us, Lord, give me grace. Give me grace to go through. Give me grace to pray. Grace. Give me grace to go through the challenges. It is the grace that will cause you to go through. The grace will teach you how to be patient. Without grace, you will not be patient. Without grace, you will not stand. Without grace, you will not be able to stand. The storms of this life. Without the grace, that valley you are in, you're not going to be able to come out victorious. Lord, give us the grace. Abundant grace. Great grace we ask that you rest upon us this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, grace of our Father, Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask for. The grace that took Jesus Christ to the cross of Calvary, you know, at some point in the Garden of Gethsemane, Christ was praying to the point he was he was sweating blood. To a point he said, you know, oh God, he was almost there, like, you know, this cup, Lord, take this cup from me, but your will. Sometimes you're in that place where we are saying, Lord, take this cup from me. I don't want it, but your will. What will make you to do that is the grace of God. Is the grace of God that will cause you to say, God, but your will, but your will. And when you say, but your will, the grace is going to cause you to stay. The grace is going to cause you to look up to the hills. The grace is going to remember that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want so many other souls. The Lord is my shepherd I will not entertain discouragement. The Lord is my shepherd I will not entertain anger. The Lord is my shepherd I will not entertain anxiety and fear. Oh God give us grace. Grace, grace my God. Paul went to it, remember? Paul went to it and for something go take this from my skin, take this from my face. Paul, I tell you, Paul, my son, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you and God is telling you and I today, my sister, the grace of God is sufficient for us. I, you have that grace. Do I have that grace to take goes us through the valleys? Do we have the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to help us to go through the, the trials and tribulation? Do we have the grace of God to help us to go over over the hills, over the over the over the uh, valleys, so we can mount up to the hills where God wants us to be, where we can find ourselves in His presence, where there is fullness of joy? Oh God, grant us grace, grace, us grace, great grace. And great grace was present upon them. If you don't ask for the grace, you will not have, grace is readily available for us. Plenty as in for us. Are you asking for that grace? When you are praying, you ask God for the, or you pray for one day. My sister, like you say, one of my sons, this line, like you say, it is better to pray through. Pray through your situation. Do we, are we able, do you know why we are not able to pray through our situation? We like the oil to force us to, you know, to make us be able to move, to move, to function well. Grace is the oil that will cause you an I, to be able to hold their devotion, to be able to pray to seek the face of God. Lord, grant us grace. Abundant grace to follow you. Abundant grace, God, to pray. Abundant grace to seek your face. Grace, my God, to continue in this journey. Grace, my Father, to stand during storms and in every evil season of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Because the enemy is working so hard, the enemy is afflicting us left, right, and center. The enemy is busy, 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 but looking for whom to devour. The Bible is wonderful already. You know, one thing I like about God, I always tell my children, I tell them, you see this Bible, you see this, this Bible, this holy book, it has everything concerning life. God is not a wicked God that he would create us and leave us on this earth just like that. He's not a careless, he's not careless like us. God is loving and very careful. You see this Bible, I tell my children, this Bible, everything concerning your life is written here. There is a GPS to heaven, we call it. It has direction, takes you from point A to point B. You are a little child, you're growing. The Bible is telling you, honor your father and you know, obey and honor your father. 
That is part of your life. That is your duty that God has given as a child. As you're growing to maturity, to adulthood, there's a place where you know you want to settle, you want to go to college, you want to do this, you want to achieve that. God is telling you, do not understand, do not lean on your own understanding, but acknowledge him. That's another, you know, and many more scriptures, many more promises are there for us to look up to. You get to the end of marriage, God is giving you the format. This is mm -hmm. the formula. This is the formula, my son and my daughter. Honor me in your marriage. Do not do this before marriage. You know, the, that's, and you go to, now you finish, you finish work, school, you want to go to work. God is telling you what to do. This is our manual. Why do we neglect the Bible? I'm asking myself, Jackie, why do you neglect to follow the manuscript that God has given you for life? Why do you tend to forget? This book is written for us, for our learning. It is for you and I. It's not for the people in the world. It is for the believers like us. And one thing I know for sure, there are attacks. The enemy are working. Sometimes these things come upon us because we sin. Sometimes these things come upon us because the enemy is attacking us. Sometimes it's God wants to elevate us in our walk of faith. I want us right now to pray for ourselves. The season we find ourselves in, the environment is so polluted. There is darkness. We cannot deny it. I want us to begin to take authority. I want us to continue to begin to take authority. Whether you believe it or not, I know and I believe and I know for sure because the Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me that we do not fight flesh and blood. When those things are happening and you want to, you want to poke your brother on your left, you want to poke your sister on your life, somebody can attack you indirectly. You think it's that person. The spirit of darkness has come upon that person. Can attack your business, can attack your job. The darkness is that is working is throwing that and arrows, but we have advantage over the darkness. Do you realize you have, a, I want us to take authority right now over every kingdom of darkness, over every evil spirit, over every demons that are released in this season, in your neighborhood, in your environment, at your workplace, in your home, in your personal life, in your health, in your finances. I want you and I to open. If you're really afraid, if you're not praying, if you're not praying, you know that you're on the right place. You're in the mountain. You stay in the mountain all the time. No, we do not stay on the mountain at all the time. We find ourselves in the world even most of the time. It only depends on the position you take. It only depends on what kind of are, are you, you, you putting on. We or miss us sometimes the, the, the soldier, they have a uniform that they wear. Are you always on your uniform or you, sometimes you take your uniform out? I want us to open our mouths and tell the Lord God Almighty, Father, right now, God has given you power to trample under feet every scorpion and every serpent. This moment is the moment that we are talking about. I want you and I to take authority over every demon, over every evil spirit that is always attacking you at the present of your time right now, attacking your life, attacking your health, attacking your business, attacking your, worker, your workers, attacking your family, your children, your husband, that, you know, there's only just a fight. It has to be an argument between you and your spouse for no apparent reason. You think that is normal? No, it is not normal. There's always argument, there's always challenge between you and your children. Is that normal? No, it is not normal because that's not the will of God. There's something that we just asked your question earlier. Is it the will of God for somebody to be sick? No, it is not. God wants her to be to prosper in all things, even in health. I want you to take authority right now in your environment. I tell you, my sister, these things work. If you believe and trust God that you are going to take authority because God has empowered you to do so, it's going to work no matter what the enemy does. Now we begin. Let's begin to take authority over every evil spirit in the name of Jesus. Christ, evil spirit that are dwelling in your neighborhood, evil spirit that are dwelling in your environment, evil spirit that are dwelling in your own personal life, in your health. You're always sick, your body is always aching, you're always having migraine. Now, nah, that's not the will of God. God wants you to prosper in all things. God wants me to prosper, and even in health. He wants me to prosper. He wants me to be healthy. It's not a good testimony for a child of God to be complaining, I have a headache, my body is aching. I do have, my, I'm talking to myself. Many times I feel my body aching. On my right side of the body, sometimes I feel numb and I'm like, no, this is not my portion. Shake it off and tell the Lord God Almighty Father to touch you with mighty touch. Shut off every demon, every demon of infirmity in your body, in your system, so that you may receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. You know when you're sick, you cannot serve God well. When you're sick, you're always tired. You may even be missing child. When you're sick, your mind is not in the right place to receive the word. You're always you cannot because you're 
concentrating in your sickness. You're concentrating in your value. You're concentrating in your discouragement. You're concentrating in your depression and your stress. Oh, no, that is not going to be my portion in the name of Jesus. You have to take your rightful place in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that you have been elevated up, seated in highly places in the Lord Jesus Christ. No, so sickness is not my portion in the name of Jesus. So I command every spirit of sickness, every hour of sickness in my body, on my right side of the body. Lord God Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you may heal me now. Heal me, Father, that I may be healed. Oh God, take me from this feeling in my body in the name of Jesus Christ. Take authority over every spirit of darkness that is manifesting in your home in the name of Jesus Christ and command those people, command those people's feet to leave. Command them to leave in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Let every Every knee bow before you. Let every knee bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every knee of sickness bow before the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Let every knee bow before the Lord Jesus Christ. Every knee shall be forced so in your home not to be saved. Command those demons. Command those demons in the name of Jesus. All those spirits that are facing your job, your work, your business. Command those those demons to leave. Command those demons to leave you alone. Command these demons to leave you. Sudden attacks of the enemy want to devour your life. They want to cut your life. So tell those demons that today, let them know once again. Remind that people that you are a child. You are a daughter of the Most High God. You see that in the highly of the Lord Jesus Christ. The prime of that demon, that greater is he that is in you and me that, than him that is in that world. That is that which outside in the world. You are greater. The greater the Christ Jesus, the Christ is in us, and we are in Christ, and Christ is in God. That he, you are greater. The God in you is greater than him. The God in you is greater than him. The God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. He is greater than that demon that is going to devour your life. He's greater than that demon that wants to tear your family. He's greater than the demon that wants to tear your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We take authority. We take authority over every evil spirit in our homes, in our children. Life. Take authority over every demons of disobedience in your children. Take authority over every spirit of darkness, of rebellion. Our children have become too rebellious, too disobedient to us in the name of Jesus Christ. The people told them, obey your mother and your father. The obedience has gone the way. We need to call for restoration upon our children that God will restore that obedience in them. Because if it carries blessing, our children cannot be less if they carry the spirit of disobedience. This morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my children. Father, I plant in them back the spirit of obedience, the spirit of honor to parents. In the name of Jesus, Father, I plant back in David, in Nathan, and in Joy, the spirit of obedience back to their soul, my God and my Savior. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to ask the Lord to cause your children to have encounters with him. Ask God, may my children encounter you. Remember Paul, Saul had to encounter Jesus. Saul had to encounter the Lord. Saul had to encounter the presence of God for him to be in his right mind in the name of Jesus. We are going to ask the Lord to cause our children to have an encounter with him. Ask God, Father, let my children encounter you. Give my children revelation of who you are, Jesus Christ. Cause my son David, Natalie, and John to encounter you. Cause my husband to encounter you, my God. Oh, great and mighty Jehovah, Lord, you did it unto Paul, my God. And you gave Gave us a story, you gave us the word concerning the story, Lord. For what reason? Yes, for the reason for us to know that you are God and that you are able to do it. This morning, we present the children before you. We ask, dear Lord Jesus Christ, that God will them to encounter you, cause our children to encounter even you and I. We need to encounter God more and more. We need God to reveal Himself unto us. Tell God, reveal yourself unto you, reveal yourself unto me, reveal yourself unto me. We are looking up the hills, our help cometh from you, God Father. It is only by your help that God we can receive that encounter. If you don't help us, we cannot receive it. We look up to the head. Him. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, Jesus. My help concerning my children is coming from you. I cannot do it on my own. My help for souls, their soul salvation comes from you. My help, God, for protection comes from you. My help from deliverance from the kingdom of darkness comes from you. My help, God, 
Lord, for my faith to increase, come from you, my God. My health, in order for me to go in my prayer life, come from you, my God. My health, in order to live and obey and do your work, come from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, my help for healing of every sickness on this land this morning, come from you, my Father, my God. My help concerning every situation, some people have to have to with the depression. We don't have people. Some of us have have God can do a miracle in your life. Don't give hope. Don't give hope. Don't be discouraged. God can see you through it. God has seen many people through it. You call on him. You call on him every day. You tell him, God, I'm fearful. God, I cannot do this. I'm limited because of this and that. Is it the same God? Yes. God that can create rivers in the in the in the desert. God that can create ways in the wilderness. This is the God that you and I are talking about. Present your case before him and tell him, God, that immigration issue, that my paper issue that is stuck, my God. I present it before you. There is nothing that he cannot do. He can do all things and he does all things well. He will do you and I well this day in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray. I will want us to take our last prayer point. And this our prayer, last prayer point is very, very important. We have prayed for our needs. We have prayed for our deliverance. We pray for you know God for help. This prayer point is about our soul. We live in the last days. We live in the last days. We live in the last days. If if you would be faced with death, I would be faced with death now, and I know I'm I'm dying. Will I have an assurance in my heart that I'm going to heaven, that I'm going to meet Jesus? Will you have an assurance in your soul that you're going to meet Jesus? We're going to ask the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want us to read Psalms 90, Psalms 90, verse 12, that God may give us wisdom to apply. Wisdom to apply. Psalms 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We are supposed to be aware of the days we live in. We are supposed to be aware that we are children of God. We are supposed to know how we ought to live. It's not like we are not aware. We cannot blame God if we don't make heaven. But here we have another opportunity to live today. Do you know how many people died? We lost recently one of our, somebody I know. Okay, I've heard of two people in the, this week that died in their sleep. Oh, they didn't wake up. They had a sickness. In fact, they have a similar situation. I was asking, they said, she was sick. They were both men sick. They had a pneumonia. They were in the hospital. They came back, they were recovering. And then they died. They were found there. One died on Wednesday, one died on, I think, on yesterday. If you and I would one day go to bed and don't wake up, do you, are you sure you're going to make it? There has to be an assurance in that. I want us to ask God to teach you and I to number our days, that we not take this day for granted. Every single day we wake up, we just zoom up, do our devotion, a little here and then go. We may do it well, but then are we always remembering when we go out in the home, if we are, that this earth is not our home, but heaven is our home? Not. I want you to add this our last prayer point, and I want you to ask God <laughs> to teach you and I. Teach me. teach me, Lord, to number my days mm-hmm. on this earth. Teach me, Lord, and give me wisdom to apply. Give me wisdom to apply in my heart. Your heart must have wisdom. Your heart must be kept with diligence. Your heart must be pure. You must be truly a child of God. Book of Second Timothy told that the foundation of the Lord stand is sure. God knows those who are his. After all has been done and said, after all the deliverance have been given unto us, after all sickness have been healed in our bodies and we are again back to ourselves, and we can you know, enjoy life again, we can go to work and big money, whatever amount of money we earn, you know, our lives go well, our business go well as usual in our homes. After all is done, we are full and we are full of joy and we are comfortable. At the end of all these things, are you and I making us go to teach you and I to number our days? Tell God, teach me, Father, to number my days and give me wisdom. Let me apply this wisdom in my heart that I may not live foolishly and miss out on you.
There are some days I used to go to work very early in the morning. I used to pray this prayer every day. And every time I prayed, there's something that was triggered in me. I would cry. I would cry. And I would tell God, I don't want to miss out on you, God. I don't want to miss out on you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to live this life empty or full of joy and or enjoyment and enjoying the things of this world. And then one day it closed my eyes to find myself in a wrong place. Tell God, teach me to number my days and let me give you wisdom to apply in my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep me, Lord God, Father, from iniquity. Keep me, Lord God, Father, from sin. Keep me, Lord God, Father, from transgression. Oh God, whatever I take, let the power of the Holy Spirit rest upon me to plant every, every debris, every unwanted habit, every unwanted sin, God, Father, in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for hearing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Back to Sister Magic. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm having some internet issues. Sometimes it locks me out and sometimes it goes back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you hear me now? Yes. I'm so sorry. I'm having some a lot of internet issues this morning. It locks me out. It brings me back in. It's just been fluctuating. So I'm trying to see if I can use another one, connect with another device. Okay. Okay. So let me... Let me, let, me, let me get out of the fire tablet. Use your phone now. Praise the Lord. Okay, this is better. My sisters, I hope you're blessed this morning. Amen. My blessed. Amen. We're all blessed. And everybody is blessed. So, we want to take some prayer requests. Do you have any prayer requests that you want the children of God to pray together? We have been encouraged by the word of the Lord already. Let's praise the Lord. And hallelujah. This is my voice. I'm putting a prayer request for my sister that's in Nigeria. My immediate senior sister. She's been sick. She's not looking when I saw her name. Oh, yesterday, the video, she looks some, like somebody else. But I know God can revive her. Amen. Amen. Let's pray that God will revive her, restore her, no matter what happens. In fact, she is the one that brought me the knowledge of the Lord. It's been, Amen. Not by saying what she says, it's, you know, words of discouragement, which shouldn't be. If, 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 even if this is her last day, that God gave her courage to come back to the truth and abide in it to the end. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, any, any other prayer request? Any more prayer requests? Okay. I want us to pray for pastor uh, of our church here in Deepa Life. He traveled to the country, to Nigeria. I want us to remember him in prayers. And this is the prayer I want us to pray. Any conspiracy against him shall be annulled in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want us to pray. And I want us to take that prayer point seriously. Any other prayer request?
Okay. I'm very happy Lord. because my sister is very, very encouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. I have a prayer request. I want to renew my international passport in October last year and uh, in New York from New Hampshire. That uh, passport is supposed to come because they told us three months, even gave us tracking number. They left, they left, uh, when the three, the three months expired, my son called them. The, the lady now said, don't believe what the tracking number is saying. He said, but you are the one that gave us the tracking number. He said, just don't believe it. So he kept quiet. Since then, when he calls them, they will not pick. Nobody picks. And we are in a new state. It's just the grace of God that made me to travel without that document. Okay, so, so we want the passport to come. Yes. It will come in Jesus' name. So we are going to pray about mm. it. Remember what the Bible tells us, that when we pray, we should believe God. Amen? Amen. Amen. We should believe God when we call upon him. And just like we have had the word of God this morning, we are going to lift up our eyes onto the hills because our help comes from there. You know, I specifically said something to the... I cried this morning. I cried because when the word of God was coming and when the sister read the message and when she said we should we should start worshiping God, I began to weep. I began I didn't know when I started with I was I wept because I had told God this morning, speak something. I want I want you to tell me something specifically this morning. And I don't know how to explain it, but you see the Lord spoke to me specifically this morning. In fact I just cried because this God is so good and so real. So wonderful. <laughs> I want to see that's why we are in this prayer line and i always say it on this prayer this is not in any other prayer line where people just jump up and say oh it's prayer line join prayer line oh prayer is not that kind of prayer line in this prayer line people hear from god before they mount here to say anything we make sure that you pray through before you come here to share anything with us you know and god and from what you hear you can tell that god is with us on this prayer line and I have mm -hmm. confirmed it one day, which I gave the testimony before. And I will keep on sharing it. I remember the day one of our sisters, she couldn't come to the prayer line because she was sick at home. You know, so and I, 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 and I was asking God, what do you want us to share on the prayer line? The Lord told me specifically Psalm 68. I don't know what was in that psalm. I got up and I read the psalm early in the morning, the night before. After reading the psalm, I prayed. I prayed and I prayed. I went to this prayer line. And I shared what what I like, I was led in my spirit, and we all prayed through in that day. On my way home, I stopped in the store to buy something, and when I finished buying the thing, I entered the car to, to go. Something said to me, I "Have not even checked on the sister that did not come on the prayer line. Call her." So I quickly called her. I said, "My sister, sorry, you." She said, "Yes, I was not feeling very well." I, I said, "But at that time, it was not a Zoom. It was in the church we are gathering." So I said to her, and that's why I said, there's no how you could have come since you're not feeling fine, but it is well. She said to me, the Lord gave me a message. The Lord also helped me to be able to pray. He gave me a, a message to pray with, a psalm to pray with. I said, what did you pray? She said, Psalm 68. And I said to myself, I shouted, I said, are you serious? She said, yes, Psalm 68. The same thing that God wanted us to share, even though she was at home, God still allowed her to share partaking the blessing. So when you come to this prayer line, be prepared and you can be called upon. We are training ourselves on this line. It's not, uh, this line, this prayer line is for Within Women Prayer Network, Within Women Prayer Line. We are training ourselves in this line and God will help us in Jesus' name. We are Amen. training ourselves so that anytime you can be called upon to lead the prayer line, you will know you that day when we call upon you and say you are going to lead for next week. You will know how to fast and pray. You will learn it by fire, by force. You will pray and you will hear God. And God knows that you have come because you want to live here. And he will tell you what to tell us here. You mm -hmm. see, this prayer line is not, I keep on encouraging us. Be encouraged. Anybody can be called upon to lead this prayer line. And you will lead it. Look at this morning, how God blessed us. Are you not blessed? I know you are blessed by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, the Lord reminded us 
of who he and what he is and who he is to us by his grace and by his mercy. It's wonderful. The Lord is so good to us. So anytime, please, as you come to this line, always come in believing, come in trusting God. We can be called upon anytime to lead this line. And you will lead it. And because God wants to take us from point A to point B. We are not going to be stagnant believers. I told you, 2024, we are moving forward in Jesus' name. We are mm -hmm. not going to, be, it's not business as usual. We are not going to remain stagnant. And the Lord will build us up. So that we come to that point where we begin to believe God the way he wants us to believe him. Nobody, we are not there yet. Nobody is there. But we are getting there by God's grace. And that is God, God is willing to take us there. That is why God always wants us to be, be studying his word. You know, be close to him. Be studying his word. Spend time on his word. He keep on encouraging us each time. Spend time. So that when you spend time, that's when you hear him. You know, he will speak to us in different ways. The Bible said in sundry times, in diverse manners, God spoke to the prophet. Today, he's speaking through his son. You know, and who is that son? The son is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was made flesh. He dwelt among men. You know, God humbled himself and came in to dwell in the womb of a young girl. You know, called Mary. That's why sometimes when I'm listening, when I'm, when I'm thinking about meditating upon the word of God, I shake my head. God came and manifested himself as Jesus Christ. Then Herod had the gods to be questioning him. The Pharisee had the gods to be throwing that at him. You know, this is the creator of the hands of, of, the, of the ends of the earth. You see, that is one thing. That's why God is God is too much to be figured out. So as we come to him, just like my sister said this morning, let's not think that God is a toy. He's not a toy. Then when, when we need something, we run to him and scream. You know, so I want us to I want us to call upon God. I want us to call upon God for this prayer request that has been presented before us. We are going to pray for our sister, Sister uh, Chuku's elder sister. We are going to tell God that God should please have mercy upon her and God should remove that sickness and disease upon her life in the name of Jesus. Let us open our hands. Let us unity of faith. I agree. Unity of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to agree in unity of faith in the last thing God in heaven. My God and my Father, Almighty and Dev and Living God, bless you. we are asking and praying this morning that lord will show us mercy the eternal father have will show her mercy and grace in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. i want us to pray for our sister that is talking about her passport let us pray that god almighty will touch whoever is holding the passport Whoever, whatever is going on there, that God will touch them to work on her passport and release it in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray for her that whoever is holding it, whatever they are doing, if somebody has forgotten that file, that the Spirit of God will remind them to pick up this file and work on it and send the passport to the owner in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Everlasting God in heaven, Jehovah, Almighty and ever living God. Jesus <laughs> Lord, I that Father, whosoever has that of of my God of my Father, everlasting God in heaven, Lord of goodness and righteousness, Almighty God in heaven, Lord of Father, I'm going to pray that 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 I'm going to pray that
Now, if I'm not going to go over else, then you should go over and listen to the Spirit Father. We pray that God will cause them to bring this passport. They don't have to help them to work on it and send it to her. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Our sisters, we are going to pray. I want us to pray for our pastor here in Deeper Life of Concord that has traveled to Nigeria. I want us to pray. This is the prayer point that I want us to pray for him. That any conspiracy against him, the Satan, any plan of the devil against him, any conspiracy against him, that God mm -hmm. should confuse their language. Mm -hmm. That the Almighty God will confuse the language of anybody that is gathering, any conspiracy against him, that God will confuse their language. Mm -hmm. You know how God confused the language of people at the Tower of Babel? Yes. And they could not, when God confused their language, nobody could understand nobody, everybody scattered. Mm -hmm. Because there was no unity anymore. I want us to pray for him. That any conspiracy, their language will be confused in the name of Jesus. Any plan of the wicked one against him, that the Almighty God will thwart that plan and bring it to naught in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Everlasting God in heaven. All the Holy Spirit, my King of my Father, my God of my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, eternal rock of ages, Almighty and ever living God. Conspiracy against him, Father, that God will confuse their language in the name of my God and my Father, Lord, you will confuse the language of the Gensayas in the name of Jesus, my God and my Father, and his Father, you will submit in the name of my God of my Father, all my dear and ever living God, eternal Father, help you to over your people and their coming in the name of Jesus, God of my Father, all my dear and ever living God, bless the Father, help you to be in the ministry in the church, eternal Father, heaven, I pray that God, heaven, the people will be blessed in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You'll be ministering in the church tomorrow. I want us to pray for him. I want us to pray for the members of that church that the blessing of God will be upon them even as he stands to minister in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That the heart of people that are broken, that God Almighty will use him to heal those broken hearted, that God Almighty will use him to speak, to speak the spirit of the living God, to, uh, to awaken the minds that are already down. That God Almighty will use him to help the people who are already broken, that God will amend those hearts, especially those who are crying in pain, that God Almighty will bring solution to their hearts and to their needs tomorrow as he speaks the word of God in that congregation in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Yes. Everlasting God in heaven, Almighty and ever living God, blessed my father, my God, I pray that your power will rest in the world. My God, and my father, my mighty father, heaven, you will take that power in the name of my father, my father, as it starts to minister, it's not a problem. If I ask for the Bible, get your spirit, your spirit, your that's a flame of fire. Let the fire of the Lord, it's not a problem. Overtake the congregation. My God, my father, you let the fire fall, let the fire from heaven fall, let the fire from heaven fall. Oh God, my God, my father, the woman of my father that has cried, that has wept, my father, you go who has no longer hope left because of the present predicament of the nation. All the right things was over the world. You will intervene because of the mercy of the Lord. Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Finally, my sisters, I want us to pray for Nigeria. And we can also pray for any other nation in Africa. But what is happening in Nigeria, we have never seen it in this fashion. Even the two children are kidnapping children. Mm -hmm. I use it. I'm telling you, kid, children are kidnapping children. Mm -hmm. All forms of wickedness is going on. Teenagers are kidnapping teenagers, killing them to mm -hmm. make rituals because the children are hungry. They are looking for money. Mm -hmm. The adults, cannot, businessmen, cannot do business. 
mm. because the dollar is falling, the naira is falling. <laughs> and the, the people coming today, they, they buy something for, 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 for two, tomorrow they come, it is now two dollars. And they are crying out and they are lamenting and they have nothing. They don't know what, what to do and they don't have anywhere to run to. And the leaders are busy sharing the money. Mm. They are busy borrowing and sharing. In mm. fact, I saw one of them, he was busy dancing on the platform while the people are hungry. Mm. And the men and women are fainting on the street. God, people are fainting God, on the street God, because God. they have not eaten for days. And the leaders are busy laughing and clamoring around. And it's okay with them. They don't seem to care. I want us to pray. There is a God in heaven that created these people. That no God arise on behalf of the poor masses in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray that God of God of heaven should please arise on behalf of the poor masses who are crying, who cannot feed themselves anymore, who have nowhere to run to, who don't even have anything to eat, who are dying of hunger, literal hunger. I want us to call upon God that God will intervene in the nation in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. but I know what you are God. I know what you are doing because we are not Almighty and God. You will intervene by your power in the name of Jesus. Mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want a sister to please round off the entire prayer for us. Anybody, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father in heaven, we give you praise, we give you thanks. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor you for you are the only true God, the living God. Thank Father, you. we thank you for this morning. We are really blessed mm. through your daughter that you have used to share the word. Amen. Father, thank you. Thank you for all the prayer points. Thank you, Father, for the grace that you have made available. Help us daily, Lord, to receive the grace, the sufficient grace, abundant grace, the enabling grace, the saving grace, and the advancing grace, to use grace daily to live the life the way you want us to live, so that we always take your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Heaven, we thank you, for we believe that you have heard all the prayer points we raise unto you this morning, because you are the one that asks us to call upon you that we hear an answer. Thank you, Father, for you always hear, you always answer. Thank you for all the prayers you have answered. Thank you for the ones we are answering and the ones that we yet answer. Father, thank you. Now, Father, Father, we thank you for the prayer points, requests from our sisters. We have committed the sister, elder sister of Sister Comfort, into your hand. But by you are the greatest physician. Amen. Father, we pray that you stretch forth your healing hand upon her life. Speak Amen. your healing word into her life. Amen. That she will receive her divine healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even our sister that is looking towards her passport arrival. Father, you know everything. And we believe and trust that very soon that passport Whoever that has it, you release it, and it will reach our sister in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we have committed our pastor that traveled to Nigeria into your hand. 
Father, we have prayed against every conspiracy. Father, you are the one that disappoints all the devices of the crafty and their mm -hmm. hands will never perform their enterprise. Mm -hmm. You are the one that frustrates all the evil counsel of the ungodly and wicked men. You turn their counsel to naught. Mm -hmm. Father, according to your word, we have called on you. Baba, you are going to confuse their languages. Yes. You are going to frustrate all their evil counsel and you are going to disappoint all their devices. They have failed completely in the name of Jesus. Concerning mm -hmm. his ministry in the church tomorrow, Baba, you promise that your power will follow your servants. Father, as he prays, Lord, him with the power of the Holy Spirit. Signs and wonders will follow. Broken hearts will be restored. Those that are sick, they will receive their healing. There will be testimonies upon testimonies after the ministration of tomorrow to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, the vessel you have used this morning, all the verses you have used, even those that sang praises, those that shared the word and prayed, eternal God, virtue has gone out of them. And we pray, Lord, that we replenish whatever virtue that has gone out. We pray more grace upon your vessels. And we commit every one of us into your hand, Father. Help us to be teachable. Help us to learn whenever we come into your presence. And help us to grow in our faith because our as our faith grows, so our trust in you deepens. And when our trust deepens, that's when we live in obedience. And obedience is what the best sacrifice we give unto you. Father, please, let our gathering before your presence every Saturday morning not be in vain in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal God, there are even other prayers we are not able to pray. We pray, Lord, that you hear us and do for us more than we have prayed because we prayed in the matchless name of your only begotten and beloved son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Can we share the grace in fellowship? And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love the love of God, God and the fellowship of the Lord be with us now. Amen. 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 Let's go, 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 let's or was it by mistake? Okay. Yes, thanks. Hello. Hi. Sister Evelyn. Did you raise your hand? You are muted. Okay. I think maybe that should be by mistake. All right. God bless us and have a blessed morning. Yeah, you too. You too. Yeah.